we've heard the Father express to us to this vessel, me, over years, this matter of iniquity and it being found in Lucifer. The question I asked him, when was it found? Here's his response. It was always known, expressed in creating material world, time, this iniquity expressed in the garden to Adam, Eve, Cain, Abel, and that iniquity vision to the third and fourth generation. We know that. So iniquity was always found in Lucifer. It's what we call reveals the mystery. Hidden, now revealed. Now catch this, in the Greek text, this word mystery is mysterious. Here's its definition. Something always known, waiting to be revealed. What was revealed? Justification, faith, and the just shall live by faith. Now, just follow me on this. Don't get lost in your interpretation of those texts I'm throwing up on screen here now. Justification, faith, which overcame the iniquity. When? It's the faith of Christ that was altered and finished before the foundations of the world. This dealing of the father with iniquity of Lucifer started in heaven, manifested in created material world at the garden, and the father through the son to another expression he's given me, who I've repeated over and over again, many of these different videos. The greatest injustice ever to be served upon humanity was that when the first Adam fell, cut himself off from the human spirit that would have known this stuff and would have been known as he should have been known as the offspring of God, listens to the author of iniquity, Lucifer. Satan, the devil, in the garden expression we read of, he falls for that lie and gets cut off from his father. At that point, Lucifer becomes his father to a lie. God's your father, not the devil. And you hear Jesus taking these self-righteous religious individuals that were to be stewards of this mystery that was going to be revealed, was revealed to the Son of God coming as a Son of Man. They should have known him. And would have been known as they were known as being the offspring of God to the Son of God. They couldn't see any of that. They were blinded to it all. You understand, the world might not have understood that. They treated the world like Gentile dog. They weren't Gentile dog. They were the offspring of God too. Jew and Gentile, Paul says it to the objection of the self-righteous religious mind of his day and our day. Because not everybody doesn't receive this, 
They say, well, how can everybody be the sons of God? Well, they're not, because they reject it. Usually because of the self-righteous religious world or bickering so many times, they can't see themselves as the offspring of God. And they're listening to some satanic liar, some doctrine of men, have no idea what this matter of the finished work of Christ is all about. The faith of Christ that was authored and finished before the world ever began. And on that cross that day, he's expressing an eternal fact. It's finished. How we were begotten in Christ. Out of that which was dead to the minds of men. First begotten from the dead. Who are the dead? Those that don't understand this mystery. You're alive, but you're dead. You don't understand who your father is. You're following some father of the flesh. Wouldn't it be better to follow the father of your spirit and live? Walk in the spirit. We have to have fellowship together. There'd be a unity of our spirits. But because we sit there with our secular religious ideologies and opinions, independent from God, you know, I think we can evaluate that book called the Bible. There's no one minus about that book. You look at all these denominations. They can't agree on it. But that ain't proof of a self-willed, religious, carnal view, fleshy view of that book. And what Apollo keeps saying, we got to surrender. Secular and religious mind, this carnal mind, to a mind that's in your spirit, that's eternal, it's alive, that you've been cut off from, unaware, it's a mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory, just beyond some religious cliche, expression of that. The mind of Christ is in you. Your eternal spirit is in you. The devil, by his lying to you, hiding himself behind men and women, expressing some lie. Fathers of your faith. Fathers of your flesh, calm, government or some idea. And Paul expressing this way, though you have 10,000 so-called, 10,000 so-called instructors claiming to be in Christ. Let every man be a liar. Let God be true. Go to your father. Not some man. Through your spirit. And get his opinion. His input. His ideas. Not doctrines of men. And wait through your spirit and you'll get that. But if you don't wait through your spirit and go off half cocked. Following some teacher. Some guide, independent of God. You got one teacher, one leader, one guide. Well, the Holy Spirit told me, the Holy Spirit's teachings are on his own. You understand that? You're listening to some false spirit. You might call him the Holy Spirit, but it's not the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit does not speak of himself. And his teachings are on his own. Whose teachings are they? The Father's. Now does he do it? He does it to the Son of God. He came in the form of a Son of Man who said over and over again that his teachings weren't his own, 
in the mood of a son of man, his teaching were those of his father, his father, our father, his God, and our God. We can't understand that. We Jehovah Witnesses twisting that all to hell. Jesus was the Son of God manifested in human flesh, a body. And while in that body, he set aside independent use of an attribute which he possessed before this world, while he was here, and will possess beyond this world. He is always the Son of God, but while he's in this mood as the Son of Man, he set aside independent use of an attribute he possessed and became a son of Adam. Beyond our idea of Adam. Not being born to the loins of Adam, which he would have been if he been, been, hadn't been virgin born. He was born of the Spirit. Your human spirit was born of the Spirit. Not some natural born idea of all of that. This has been shared to us. People can't understand it. Even the Greek scholar who translated it this way probably didn't understand it. When dealing with Nicodemus in chapter 3 of John, saying that Nicodemus had to be born again, he was a teacher of Israel, he didn't know these things, he should have known it. You, Nicodemus, are a teacher of Israel, and you don't know these things? You who are teachers of this church, and you don't know these things? You should know this. We've had 2,000 years to know it. All we see is 2,000 years has removed us so far from the mystery that was revealed. So Kenneth Weiss translated this word. Look, I said, I don't think he understood it. And Nicodemus is told by Jesus that he has to be born again. Here's how it's expressed in the Greek text. This second birth, he has to be born again. He got to be reminded again. The second birth has the same source as the first birth. And you have to get into this idea first. Jesus, the Son of God, is the first. Eternally first. We can't understand that. The preeminent one. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That which is preeminent. And I'm being reconciled back to that. The Greek text for the word reconcile is back to a primal base. What's the primal base? You were begotten in Christ. Eternally begotten. He was always your father. To the finished work. Eternally finished. Once and for all. In the mind of God. This has come out in the beginning. Genesis chapter 1, John chapter 1. In the beginning, in the Hebrew is Rashi. In the beginning, in the mind of God, eternally in the mind of God, was an eternal desire of the Father to have sons and that eternal desire. He always had those sons. That's the mystery. The mysterious. Something that was always there only needed to be manifested and it was manifested in created material time. Hidden at first in the, in the garden because the treacherous soul would twist this all to hell, and it did. Manifest in the creative material of time, in the fullness of time, expressed through the Son of God, becoming the Son of Man. Look into Jesus, 
He often faced her this, not to some man. Who for joy was special with him endured the cross, the spy, and the shame, now sits down to the father of the Father, for consider him that you grow weary and faint in your carnal, fallen mind. Trying to figure this out. You're never going to figure it out. This mind has to be renewed. With a better word, translation is exchanged. This carnal way of thinking and tap into your human spirit that cries out a Father. Your spirit knows the Father. There's never been a living second that it didn't exist. It's eternal. And we get it all messed up with the word create and make by Ra Asa in the Hebrew. Get rid of that word. God manifested internal fact. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it was in heaven. All we're doing, supposed to be doing, is manifesting the kingdom of God on earth. And we've cut us off all from that kingdom of God and fallen for some satanic lie, created some kind of kingdom independent from God that Lucifer in his efforts to usurp the kingdom of God. He eventually wants to get rid of mankind, claiming that the angels are the sons of God. They're not the there. They were subservient to those who would inherit, eternally inherit, sonship, the offspring of God. So much more to this. I've shared it and shared it, and few get it. But at least it's available to all. It's not some special teaching, some Gnostic teaching, only for a small lead group. It's available to all. The same mind is in Jew and Gentile. It's been brought about offspring of God. Do that serious. Go to chapter 17 of Acts. Then go to John chapter 17. That's easy to remember. John 17, Acts 17. Read those two chapters in conjunction to one another and see the greater depths of the oneness of God and our being in Him. The Son's in the Father, the Father's in the Son, and we are were in them eternally begotten. Eternal. The material created world was a, created by God to express that eternal kingdom in material created world. And with us in a body that could have lasted forever. Not being cut off from the spirit, it would have lasted forever. And that's what we're going to do. He's going to bring us back spirit, soul, and body. And it'll last forever.